G. Marshall. You've come to the right place. Here we present a unique kind of drama. Drama that uses your ears to stimulate your fears. The story you are about to hear concerns another part of the human anatomy. It's a tale about a very frightening pair of hands. Not because they're ugly or mutilated or because they do evil things. On the contrary, the hands of our heroine do nothing at all. And therein lies her terror. But there's one other subject our story deals with. And it's the most mysterious of all. The human mind. I want to believe you, Doctor. Don't you know how much I want to believe you? Ah, but you'd much rather believe that I was a quack. A faker. Even a criminal, perhaps? No, no, I want to be cured. Oh, I do. I want my hands back. Oh, dear God, I want my hands. Our mystery drama, The Hands of Mrs. Mallory, was written especially for the Mystery Theater by Henry Slesser and stars Celeste Holm. It is sponsored in part by Anheuser-Busch Incorporated, Brewers of Budweiser, and Buick Motor Division. I'll be back shortly with Act One. Think of the most beautiful day you can imagine. A day so perfect that the birds are singing its praises. And even the people who line the park benches, those roosting creatures who seem to exist in a vacuum without emotion, seem happy and contented today. But there's one exception. A lady of middle years who sits alone on a bench. Is it her glum expression that has driven away other people? Or perhaps it's the obvious elegance of her mink stole and the glistening perfection of the diamond on her finger. Hey, lady, is this seat taken? No. It's okay if I sit here and wait for my brother? He's playing in the ball game. How nice. He plays first base. Hey, you want to see my baseball? Uh, not especially. It's got Reggie Jackson's autograph on it. Here, look at it. No, please, I, I, I really don't know. What? Uh, what's the matter with your hand? Nothing. It's... They're just a little stiff, that's all. Why don't you go watch your brother play? Well, he says I jinx him. He, your hands look funny. I mean, can't you move them at all? No. As a matter of fact, I can't. Gee, that's funny. I never saw anything like that. How come you can't move your hands? It's a kind of a sickness. You wouldn't understand. But maybe if you explained it to me, I would. Yes. If I could explain it to you, son, I would be very happy to do so. You don't know how happy. Come in, Ida. Have a seat. I always feel so guilty when I take your time. Each examination seems to produce exactly the same result. That's no reason not to keep examining you. Then there isn't any change. No, Ida. No change. What have you been doing lately? Well, I've been sitting in the park a lot. (laughs) I see. It's a bit ridiculous, isn't it? I have this glamorous terrace. I can sit there like a queen and view the whole park and all the people in it. But I prefer to sit on a bench and watch the squirrels and listen to the children. Oh, I think that's a good thing, frankly. To be on the ground, in touch with things. Herbert never believed in that. Herbert liked to get away from the smell of the crowd. Yes, that was the phrase he always used, the smell of the crowd. My husband knew a great number of unkind phrases. Well, I never knew him, of course. 
No. Neither did I, I suppose. Even when he was lying in his coffin, I felt as though I was saying goodbye to a stranger. And after Mr. Mallory died, how soon after that did the paralysis set in? Oh, it was about a month. Yes, a month after, I suppose. That soon? Yes. And now it's been... How long since you haven't been able to move your hands? Five years. Can you believe it, Doctor? <laughs> I can't. After the first six months of this terrible paralysis, I thought I, well, I couldn't go on living with these stone fingers of mine. I thought it would be preferable to be dead. But you never lost hope of a cure. No. I mean, that's what's kept me going. The hope of a cure. Oh, and something else. I suppose one must say a kind word for money. If there was one thing Herbert did in his life, he managed to leave a very rich widow behind him. Ida, I hope you won't misunderstand what I'm going to say. Doctor, you don't have to say it. I know what comes next. You're going to advise me to get out of myself. To stop thinking about my poor hands and think about other people. Charity work. Well, Ida, that's one suggestion. But... Oh, if you knew how many charity committees use my name, or how many thousands of dollars I give to every foundation with an impressive name. Ida, I was going to talk about going back to that psychiatrist. Oh, that. I honestly think you gave up too soon. If you'd given the man a chance... Dr. Merritt, my hands are paralyzed. I'm not imagining it. They're paralyzed, frozen, insensitive. You've made all the tests yourself. Do you think I've been faking? Oh, no, no, of course not. The illness is genuine, but... But sometimes the origin of an illness of this nature can... It's all in the mind, yes, of course. All in the mind. So easy to say that, isn't it? So many doctors have told me the same thing. It's so much easier to blame my mind than their own failure. Ida, please. Doctor, excuse me. It's time for me to go. You've got lots of patients waiting for you. Some of them you might even help. Hey, hi. Oh, it's you again. Waiting for your brother? Nah, he's not playing today. Oh, that's too bad. It's a lovely day. He broke his leg. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. Hey, is that what happened to your hands? I mean, did they get broken? Mm, something like that. Well, do you feel anything at all? I mean, like your fingers? You're a very curious boy. Did anyone ever tell you that? Can I just catch him, lady? Please? No, please don't. Hey, hey, you kid, now cut that uh -huh. out. Well, Stop I... bothering this lady, you hear me? I wasn't bothering her. All right, was... now go on, get out of here, leave her alone. Okay, okay. I just wanted to touch her. Um... I'm sorry, ma'am. I just couldn't help overhearing. Uh, thank you. He was getting a little too bothersome, although I'm sure he didn't mean any harm. Well, I could see that you were getting annoyed. Ted? Ted? Yeah, oh, yes, I'm over here, Melinda. Lend me a hand, huh? I can't manage two hot dogs and a bag of peanuts and two crutches at the same time. Oh, sure, honey. I'm sorry. Uh, excuse me, ma'am. Oh, this one's yours, with the mustard. Thanks. Do you think I could sit down? Of course. Ted, would you grab that crutch? Yeah, I got it. Listen, I told you that I'd get the hot dogs. I mean, you didn't have to be quite so independent. <laughs> That's funny. You're always complaining that I'm not independent enough. Oh, am I crowding you, ma'am? Oh, no, no. Plenty of room. Ted, who, who was that boy I saw running off? Oh, I drove him off. He was uh, bothering this woman. Oh, dear. Oh, are you all right? Oh, yes, I'm fine. As a matter of fact, he was telling me about his brother's accident. He hurt his foot. I guess... This must be the season for accidents. You mean these crutches? I'm afraid that was another season. Hey, you know, gee, it's warm, isn't it? Huh? For this time of year? <laughs> of course, you're warm. Saving fair damsels and all that stuff. I didn't know you were a regular St. George, Ted. Well, sure I am, with kid dragons. <laughs> Uh, would you like some peanuts, ma'am? We've been trying to give them away to the squirrels all day, but we haven't seen any. No, thank you. I, I don't like peanuts very much. I can't imagine what squirrels see in them. <laughs> don't worry. My brother will happily eat them all by himself. Your brother? Uh, oh, I'm Melinda West. This is my brother, Ted. And my name is Mrs. Mallory. How do you do? Uh, haven't I seen you two here before? Oh, you probably have. We live close to the park. Are you from around here, Mrs. Mallory? Oh, yes. I live in 
that building right there. Oh. What a view you must have. Uh, can you see the park from your window? Oh, yeah. Oh, if I had a window like that, I'd never come down to the park. <laughs> well, of course, these crutches sort of discourage you walking around very much. Do you both live in the city? No, no, we're from Ohio. We've only been here about two months, but uh, I guess we'll be going back soon. Don't say that. Don't even think that, Ted, please. I'm sorry, Melinda, I, I didn't I mean to... I gather that uh, you don't want to leave. Well, not if it means that... Well, the truth is we came here to see a doctor, a, a surgeon who specializes in cases like mine. You see, I was in an automobile accident two years ago. I haven't walked since. Oh, oh, I'm so sorry. I know exactly how you must feel. Well, people always think they do, but they really can't... Oh, uh, Melinda. What? I think your brother is trying to signal you, Melinda, about me. What do you mean? He means... These... My hands. Oh, oh I'm so sorry. I, I, I didn't even realize. No, some people don't realize that I can't move them. See, as long as I sit here very quietly, my whole body is as immobilized as my hand. Yes. No, I know what you mean. I know how tempting it is to just want to sit, be a statue, so that for a little while you can forget that part of you is dead. Oh, come on, Melinda, please. Let's cut this out, huh? Please. Tell me more about this surgeon. I can tell you what he said in one word. One two-letter word. Oh, dear. He won't operate, then. He said it wouldn't do any good. Uh, he turned us down flat. That's why I want Melinda to let me take her back home. Oh, well, do you have parents there? No. No, no, we have no one. Uh, but I don't want to go back. I, I don't. I want to see... What were you going to say? Never mind, Mrs. Mallory. Now, come on, Melinda. You finished your hot dog. Let's, let's go home. Ted, let me tell her. Let me ask oh, for her. For Pete's sake, what kind of nonsense is this? What do you want to bother the woman for? Because there's no one else I can talk to about Dr. Griff. I, I can't talk to you about him. You just get red in the face and stomp away from well, me. There's nothing to talk about, and I'm sure Mrs. Mallory isn't interested in fairy stories. I really don't know what either one of you is talking about. Who is Dr. Griff? Oh, he's a quack, a phony. Yes. Well, that's all he is. A two-bit faith healer who robs every cripple he can get his hands on. You don't know anything about him. You only met him once. Yeah, well, that was enough. I could tell in one second that the man is a fake. He can't cure a broken spine. But why not let him try? Somebody has to try. I don't want to be the way I am. Oh, Mrs. Mallory, I don't want to be this way. Help me. Help me, please. <laughs> Mrs. Mallory's physician would be very pleased right now. At last, his patient seems to be taking his advice to interest herself in the outside world, in problems other than her own. But how involved will those problems become? We'll wait to find out until I return shortly with Act Two. Good weather is holding in the city, and Mrs. Ida Mallory has returned day after day to her bench in the park, a bench which seems to have become her property by right of eminent domain. But even Mrs. Mallory would have to admit that her interest in these daily visits is no longer restricted to sunshine and green grass. Each day, she hopes for another glimpse of the young couple, the scowling brother and his pretty, pathetic sister. And then, on the fourth day, there they were. Excuse me. I don't know if you'll remember me. Why, of course. You're Mrs. Mallory, the lady with the view. <laughs> yes, that's right. How are you both? Oh, we're okay. Well, I really didn't mean to interrupt your conversation. Oh, don't be concerned about the way Ted looks. His face always is like a thundercloud. Especially when we discuss the forbidden topic. 
I suppose you mean that doctor. Mia, she talked me into seeing him again. You know something? Every feeling I had about him the first time was confirmed. That's really impossible, Mrs. Mallory. Tell me something. Is he a real doctor? Well, I'm not sure he's a medical doctor, Mrs. Mallory, but I'm sure he's entitled to the degree. Maybe a, a doctor of psychology or something like that. I'll tell you what he's entitled to. A good swift kick in but the... But I'll tell you one thing about Dr. Griff. He's the only one, the only one who said he could help me. He didn't promise. He just said he was hopeful. Well, that's something anyway. Yeah, I'll tell you what he's hopeful about, getting your 500 bucks. He says he's very hopeful I can be cured. And that's worth a great deal more than $500. All right, go on. Tell her the rest. Tell her the real clincher. Are you afraid to? What do you mean? Mrs. Mallory, you're an intelligent woman. So listen to how Dr. Griff plans to cure my sister. I know it sounds sort of melodramatic. Oh, it's idiotic. That's what it is. Please. Please, I'd still like to know. Well, he says he uses something called the water of faith. See what I mean? The water of faith? Yeah. Sounds sort of, um, hmm, religious. Like, um... Uh, the holy water of Lourdes. It's it's related to that, yes. Oh, now do you see why I say the guy is an out-and-out -out fraud? The water of faith. Where are we? Back in the Middle Ages? Well, I must admit it does sound sort of odd. Just the same. He said that it works. That it's worked for dozens of people. He wants $500 for the treatment. With no guarantees, you understand. Hmm. Oh, Mrs. Mallory, will you help me, please? Will you talk some sense to this woman? Oh, my dear. I mean, I have to admit, it really doesn't sound reasonable. You mean the $500? Oh, but it's a very special treatment, Dr. Griff said. Well, I meant it's not reasonable to assume that such things can do any good. I see. So I'll never know. Is that it? I'll just turn around and take a plane back to Ohio and live out the rest of my life as a cripple. When for $500, at least I might have had a chance to yes. live. Yes, I see what you mean. Ted. Oh, I hope you don't mind my calling you Ted. Oh, no, no, of course not. Your sister, well, she may have a point there. I mean, even if it is a waste of money, perhaps she'll never be happy unless you let this man try. If not... She'll always wonder about it. Always. Yes. Yes, I know that. That's what his whole bag is, making you wonder if it just might work. And, well, about the money. I don't know how to say this. But you see, $500 may seem like a lot to you, but it isn't to me. So if I can help you... Oh, no, no. Oh, no, please. Absolutely not. It's not really a problem, Mrs. Mallory. We've got the money. Besides, it's not the money so much as... Well, seeing Melinda disappointed again. I've had so many disappointments, you see. Yes. Yes, I know all about such things. Oh, dear. Yes, of course you do. Oh, you see what a selfish person I've become. I keep forgetting that you have your own affliction... I'm not sure that it isn't even worse than mine to lose the use of your hand. Well, never mind about me. What What are you two going to do? Oh, I don't... It looks like I'm outnumbered on this thing. Dad! Does that mean you... You'll let me do it? You'll let me? Well, if you go back without trying this dumb water of faith, you'll always regret it. So, okay, let's get it over with. Oh, Mrs. Mallory... Oh, thank you, thank you. You're the one who did it. Oh, my dear. I just hope your miracle happened. All my life, I wanted to believe that miracles happen. Melinda? Melinda? Wait a minute. Oh, oh Mrs. Mallory. Well, you move faster on those crutches than I do on my two feet. You're... You're not here alone, are you? No. Ted's with me. I just wanted to take a little stroll by myself. No, that isn't true. We just had another fight, and I had to get away from him. Oh, dear. Now, that doesn't sound too good. Well, you know how Ted is. Well, I haven't seen you for two days. How are you? The truth is... 
I don't really know. But I've I started treatments, Mrs. Mallory. With Dr. Griff? Yes. I, I started about five days ago. And it's... It's nothing at all like what I expected. Well, tell me about it. Well, you remember how silly it all sounded, this water of faith business. Well, it sounded a little theatrical. But it isn't. It's scientific, Mrs. Mallory. That's the most wonderful part of it. Dr. Griff only used that phrase as a, as a convenient description of, of the, the drug. What drug is that? Well, maybe I shouldn't tell you this. Why not? Oh, I don't know. I I have the feeling that, that there might be something slightly illegal about it. The, the drug oh. he uses, a psychedelic suggestion. Psychedelic suggestion? Now, what on earth is that? Oh, it's the technique Dr. Griff uses. He, he uses it to, to liberate the mind from its control over the body... Whenever that control is negative. I'm sorry. You know, I really don't understand that kind of talk. Well, I'm not saying I understand it myself. Completely. But it does sound to me as if he believes that your illness is psychosomatic. I don't know, Mrs. Mallory. All I know is that I have to go through with it. Kill or cure. It isn't a dangerous treatment, is it? No, no, I, I'm sure it isn't. It, it's... Well, it's more like a sort of a hypnosis. I go to his office, he administers the drug, and then he talks to me. And that's all there is to it. And has it helped? I I think I'd better go back to Teddy. He he's probably getting worried about me. Melinda, please tell me if Melinda, look out! That bicycle! Oh! Oh! Melinda. I'm sorry, Miss. I'm sorry. Melinda, are you all right? Oh, you let, let me help you up, Miss. Oh, you idiot. I mean, can't you what? see that that girl is crippled? Quick, give me that crutch. Oh, yes, sure. Wait, wait, wait. I, I, I think I, I can manage to pick myself up this way. Now, just, just take it easy. Mrs. Mallory. What is it? Are you hurt? No, no. No, it's my leg. D did you see that? My leg bent slightly at the knee. No, no, I didn't see Look, it. Miss, if you're sure you're okay. Oh, get out of here. Go away and be more careful next yes, time. Yes, Miss. Oh, Miss Ma Mrs. Mallory, I'm sure it happened. I, I saw it happen. My leg moved. For the first time in two years, it moved. <laughs> No, Ida, I'm sorry. I can't find any reference to this Dr. Griff in any medical directory. But that doesn't prove he's a fraud, though, does it? Oh, no, of course not. And as you say, the man may not be a medical doctor. I certainly hope he isn't. Why do you say that? Pride of profession, my dear. We don't like to have faith healers bearing the same credentials. And that's what you think he is, a faith healer? Well, of course. Oh, I'm not knocking the power of faith far from it. Very often, it's simply another way of getting at psychosomatic difficulties. Oh, I hate that word. I know you do. Oh, I've been through all that psychosomatic nonsense. All those doctors who tried to tell me that my paralyzed hands weren't... Well, what they are. That there's something in me, some emotional problem. You didn't give them much chance to prove or disprove it, either. I did. I submitted to their therapy, even if I didn't believe in it, and it didn't do the slightest bit of good. Well, maybe if you had believed them, it would have. Flesh is flesh, doctor. Bone is bone. That kind of therapy can't make my hands move any more than it can make that poor girl walk. And I have a good mind to tell him so. Please come in, Mrs. Mallory. Thank you. Won't you have a chair? All right. Well, do you mind if I ask who referred you to me? Well, actually, it was one of your patients, Melinda West. Yes, yes, of course, a very charming young woman. Have you known her long? Just a few weeks. See, I haven't seen her for the last ten days or so. How is she coming along? Well, actually, you'll get a chance to see her soon. 
She has a three o'clock appointment with me, which is only a few minutes from now. So, if you wouldn't mind telling me what's on your mind, Mrs. Mallory. Well, I just thought it would be um, worthwhile talking to you, Doctor. About yourself? Well, as you can see, I am afflicted. Uh, do you mind if I look at your hands? Yes, frankly, I'd rather you wouldn't. Not just now. I'd, I'd rather hear something about yourself, about this uh, treatment of yours. Melinda said something about a technique you used called uh, psychedelic suggestion. Now, just what is that? It's a medical principle. As old as mesmerism, as new as chemotherapy. The power of mind over body. Huh? Psychosomatic. Well, who knows what afflictions is psychosomatic. Some illnesses start with the emotions, some with the body. And more often, it's a combination of both. Really? Germs aren't imaginary. Viruses are very real little creatures. Yet the mind has strange powers over them to make them hurt us or to render them harmless. All right, then. What about a broken leg? Can the mind cause that? Of course. If you use your head, you wouldn't break your leg in the first place. Oh. <laughs> You're thinking of Miss West, of the fact that she suffered a spine injury. That's right. I hardly see how you can correct something like that. You've seen her x-rays then? No. You believe the damage is neurological? Well, I know nothing about it. That's strange, Mrs. Mallory. You certainly seem to have an opinion. <laughs> Be careful, though. You don't have a medical degree. Someone might call you a quack. Listen, doctor. I came here... Oh, uh, excuse me, Mrs. Mallory. Ah, Melinda. I'll be with you in just a minute. No. No, come to think of it. Why don't you come in now? There's a friend of yours here. A friend? Oh, it's I, Melinda, Mrs. Mallory. Oh, Mrs. Mallory, how nice to see you. Come in, Melinda, please. Melinda... Your crutches. Where are your crutches? Look at me, Mrs. Mallory. I can walk without crutches now. I'm not very steady, but I can walk. Well, there goes at least one of Mrs. Ida Mallory's cherished notions that the mind can't cure the body. But she sees the evidence of her own eyes. And something tells me that this is one prejudice she's willing to give up. After all, she wants to believe in miracles. And don't we all? We'll see what other miracles occur when we return shortly with Act Three. Mrs. Ida Mallory has spent a sleepless night dreaming of things she never thought possible. But when the sun streamed in her windows, her first thought was to get out into the park and with only one hope of seeing Melinda West again and seeing her miracle confirmed. It's true. It's really true, Mrs. Mallory. Even Ted has to admit it. Well, I guess there's something to it, all right. I haven't seen my sister off those crutches in two years. But how did it all happen? I don't really know. As I told you, he, he used this drug, he made me go to sleep, and then he simply talked to me. At first there was nothing, and then I started feeling life in my legs again. Well, you saw me that day in the park when I fell down. Oh, Melinda, Melinda. I, well, I just can't tell you how happy I am for you. Well, and what are your plans now? Oh, go home, I guess. I've got to get back to my job if it's still there. The treatment costs much more than we thought it would. Yes, the oh. 500 went in no time at all. Then he asked for another 1,000. He said it couldn't be helped. The drug he uses is so horribly expensive. Now, listen. I told you once that if there were any way I could help you out financially... Uh-uh. No, no. No, that's out, Mrs. Mallory. We'll, we'll manage okay. Of course we will. Well. <laughs> and I can go back to work now. I can do anything I want now. Oh, yes. Yes, that must be a wonderful feeling. To be able to do anything you want. Ah, oh, 
Mrs. Mallory. Please come in. Thank you, Doctor. You know, it was really very good of you to see me on such short notice. That's quite all right. Please sit down. Thank you. Well, I don't quite know where to begin. Well, suppose I begin for you. You've been thinking about Melinda West. Yes, I saw her only this morning. She really is cured, isn't she? Yes, Mrs. Mallory. In my opinion, the young woman was cured. But you realize that all I really cured by psychedelic suggestion was the illness that existed in her mind, not her body. But I still don't fully comprehend it. I'm sure there was no real neurological damage to the girl. Oh. I think her bones and muscles and nerves were all in the proper place and functioning normally. Only her mind wasn't. But she seemed so sensible. Mrs. Mallory, do you know the story of that accident? I beg your pardon? Did Melinda ever tell you exactly what occurred that caused her injuries? No. No, as a matter of fact, she didn't. She simply said it was an automobile accident. That's correct. And she was the driver. Oh. There were two other passengers, her mother and her father. Both of them were killed. Oh, dear Lord. She did sustain some injuries in the crash. But it was apparent to me that they were not sufficiently grave to cause her the total paralysis she suffered. Ah, uh, you mean she felt that guilty about what had happened? Mm. Guilty enough to seek punishment for herself. And she did. She punished herself by losing the use of her legs. And... And so, your treatment was able to cure her. Yes, I'm happy to say. But, of course, it couldn't cure someone like me. What was that? I said it couldn't cure me. See, I didn't lose the use of my hands for any kind of reason like that. I mean, it's just some sort of nerve damage. Doctors could never explain it. Well, if that's the diagnosis of your physician... That it's purely physical and incurable. Oh, but I didn't say that. See, I mean, my doctor has never used the word incurable. I have been hoping for years that it would just heal itself. I can't go on living like this. So helpless and so useless. Uh, Mrs. Mallory, have you come here to talk about Melinda West or yourself? Myself. Hmm. I want my hands back. Oh, dear God, I want my hands. Yes, I was afraid that's what you had in mind. Afraid? Why? Because if you had any idea of becoming my patient, I, I regret to say that it's not possible. But why not? I mean, you accepted her as a patient. And, and you cured her. I mean, you really did. Unfortunately, Miss West is the last patient I can accept. At least in this part of the world. Doctor, I, I don't understand. Are you... Do you have to go somewhere? That's correct. But where are you going? Abroad. And my plans will keep me abroad for at least a year. Oh, no. I mean, listen, if you're going to Europe, I, I mean, I was thinking of taking a trip no, there myself. No, no, Mrs. Mallory, my destination isn't Europe. I'm going to North Africa, a case of some importance. Well, listen. When is one patient more important than another? Oh, no, no, I didn't mean it that way. Oh. It's simply that this is a prior commitment. But maybe then, maybe I could go with you. I mean, I could take up residence there. I'm afraid that's impossible, too. Why? Well, the country I'm going to is a Muslim country. My patient is the son of, well, a, uh, a notable Arab leader. Oh, why would that make any difference? What does it matter? I'll be living within the bachelor section of the official residence. It's an area restricted by Muslim law. You wouldn't be allowed near the place, my dear lady, even if I were free to treat you. And I'm not. But I have money. I'll pay you. I'll pay you anything you want to stay and treat me. I mean, I'll, I'll meet this Arab leader's offer. Mrs. Mallory, the fee I'm about to receive, I wouldn't ask of any individual... I've been asked to remain with him for a period not to exceed one year. A year? For that year, in a Swiss bank, there will be deposited for me 
$150,000 in Swiss francs. One hundred fifty thousand. I'm very sorry that you made me reveal that confidence. No, I, I trust that it goes no farther. I'll pay you the same. What? You heard me. I'll pay you the same. I mean, not in a year's time, but as soon as you cured me. I'm sorry. Your offer is very generous, but it's also conditional. What do you mean, conditional? You'll pay only for a cure. That's something I'd never guarantee the patient. Not Miss West, not my Arab friend. No one at all. All right, then. Suppose it isn't conditional. Suppose I agree to pay you in advance. Well, that, of course, would be something worth consideration. <laughs> Hello, Dr. Merritt. This is certainly a surprise. I think it must be the first time that a doctor ever made a voluntary house call. Well, I, I didn't come here to see you as a patient, Ida. Only as a friend. Well, that's very kind of you. Ever since I saw you last, I've been thinking over what you told me about this Dr. Griff. Oh, yes. Well, what about him? I thought it would be worthwhile just to ask around about the gentleman. And last week I was attending a joint conference of my medical association and psychological group. Mm -hmm. well, anyway, I did learn something that I thought you might be interested in. There is no Dr. Griff. Well, what was that? Oh, maybe he has a Ph.D. and tack that in front of his name, but I'm quite sure that the man is not a medical doctor. All right. Be that as it may, he's still not necessarily a fraud. Well, I... I didn't say he was anything. But I suspect that your original judgment was correct. But... That he's not someone to be trusted. But you don't know the whole story. Well, what I do know is you're more impressed with a man than you were willing to admit. Isn't that right? Dr. Merritt, he cured that girl. What? You know that girl I told you about, the crippled girl? She's walking again. I saw her walk. Well, I suppose that could be true. Faith healing does have its successes. Well, I'm sorry, Doctor, but I'd rather not discuss this any further. Oh, wait a minute. I don't like the way you sound. Ida, have you made any sort of... Arrangement with this charlatan? Dr. Merritt, I appreciate your interest, but I refuse to say another word about this matter. I mean, do you understand? Not another word. That's right, Mrs. Mallory. Just relax. Close your eyes. And let the water of faith through your bloodstream. You can feel it tingling through your body, bringing you peace and tranquility. Total peace and happiness. Do you feel it? Yes. Yes, I feel it. And now... Yes, what do you want? Are you Dr. Helmut Griff? Yes, who are you? The name's Barry, Doctor. Lieutenant Barry, Racket and Bunko Squad, Police Department. May I come in? No, you can't. I happen to have a patient with me right now. Would her name be Ida Mallory? And who are you? I'm her physician. You might say her accredited physician. I demand to know what this intrusion is all it's about. It's not an intrusion, Dr. Griff. It's an arrest. What? Doctor? Dr. Griff. So, uh, may we come in now? Ida. 
Ida, are you all right? Yes. Well, what, what is it? It's I mean, all what's right, happening? Ida. Everything's going to be fine. They've got them all now. All of them. Well, what are you talking about? Uh, is this a lady, Doc? Yes, this is Mrs. Mallory. I don't think she's in any condition to talk. He's obviously given her some kind of drug. It's a, a legitimate drug, a, a perfectly legitimate sedative. Yes, yes, of course. Doctor, I'm sure it's nothing very unusual, second all or something of that nature. No mysterious water of faith. Please, please, won't someone tell me what's going on? I'll tell you, Ida. But it may hurt just a little. You see... I told the police your story, and they investigated. He is a fraud, Ida. How dare you say that? Be quiet, mister. You're no more a doctor than I'm police commissioner. His real name is Michael Lanning. Alias Dr. George Watkins, alias Dr. John Wilson, and that's his modus operandi, Mrs. Mallory, posing as a fake doctor, offering miracle cures, usually for sick widows with lots of money. Oh... But he cured her. I mean, he cured Melinda. This is the part that may hurt most, Ida. He did not cure Melinda West. Because Melinda West was never crippled to begin with. I know. It was just psychosomatic. Oh, no, she... no, 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 Ida. Just crooked. What? She I... was in on the racket with him, Mrs. Mallory. Her real name is Anna Fraser. Oh. Her so-called brother is Tony Fraser. And I'm sorry, they're not brother and sister at all. They're man and wife. No. And I believed them. I believed them. Well, we haven't caught up with those two yet, Mrs. Mallory, but we will. Oh, I uh, brought some pictures for you to identify. No, no. I don't want to look at them. I can't bear to look at them. Please, Ida, you must. But I don't want to prosecute them. I don't. Why really? not? They're crooks, plain and simple crooks, all three of them. I don't care. You have to help us now, Ida. You have to identify these parasites. Now, please, look at the photographs. You know something, Doctor? Sometimes people set out to do good and end up doing harm. And sometimes it works the other way around. What do you mean? Hey, now. Hey, now, stop that. Now, don't rip up those photos. Ida, 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 what are you... For the love of heaven, you're tearing up the pictures. You're tearing them up. With my hands, Doctor. With my own hands. Well, they say that it's an ill wind that doesn't blow someone some good. And in this case, it looks like three evil people have managed to be very good to Mrs. Ida Mallory, in spite of themselves. If there's a moral to this tale, I'd frankly hate to be the one to say it. I'll be back shortly. recommending that the best way to cure your ills is to fall into the hands of confidence men. Mrs. Mallory was one of the lucky exceptions. But if you heed our advice, the next doctor you meet who just happens to be leaving for North Africa to treat an Arab chieftain in a remote palace, well, uh, be a little bit suspicious, Okay. Our cast included Celeste Holm, Patricia Elliott, William Redfield, E.V. Juster, Arnold Moss, and Leon Janney. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. Now, a preview of our next tale. Dear Wood, I just can't condemn the cable car without giving the folks at Helvetia notice. But look, th this is an emergency. Two weeks ago, you certified the car as safe. Now, what's come up so sudden? It hasn't been sudden. I've known... I've known about it for months. Well, we've lived with geological faults, Elwood. Yeah, sure, but a heavy rain, unusual amount of snow, any one of a hundred subterranean disturbances in that whole side of the mountain... Okay, gonna... okay, let's do a study. No, that will take weeks, months. It could go any time. And it could never go at all. Elwood, now here's what you have to do. Next time you inspect it, in two weeks, condemn it. Give me a full report. 
Request an investigation, and we'll bring in the experts. Put it in writing. By that time, it'll be too late. Radio Mystery Theater was sponsored in part by Buick Motor Division and Anheuser-Busch Incorporated, Brewers of Budweiser. This is E.G. Marshall inviting you to return to our mystery theater for another adventure in the macabre. Until next time, pleasant dreams. <laughs> <laughs>